Hopefully it's a word that has sort of intuitive resonance in terms of what we understand the word poaching to mean normally, um, but it's also an acronym and it stands for the principle of anticipated co-optation and hollowing out. Poaching is what the powerful do to any attempts at reform. So it's basically the idea that if you're going to try and change things you have to from the outset expect that the powers that be will both try and take over what you're doing and empty it of substance. And, and the, the H you know, on the end of poach, the hollowing out, I think is very important because often you've had discussions around climate, for instance, where people talk about you know, the sort of moral rights and wrongs of whether, whether or not the big fossil fuel companies should be allowed to be the solution to climate change or whether because they've caused the problem they shouldn't be allowed. And it you know, gets into this, this question of moral nicety. Um, but it's not that that's not a question at all. Once we let them co-opt it, they also hollow it out. And that's the crucial thing that we need to understand. And I think this is very relevant to the whole radical, um, sort of radical reform debate. Um, that I think, armed with the poach principle, we can go and talk to anyone anywhere um, if we, you know, if we can be appropriately wary of how that that strategy will almost certainly be imposed on us. Um, but I think if we if we respond instead to, to the danger of being co-opted by just trying to kind of shut everyone and everything out and not talk to anyone, it just means we're much more effectively propagandizable. That if we don't speak out, if we don't fight our own corner and don't provide an alternative, our own alternative framing as much as possible, then we do leave occupied to the, the predations of the, of the media filtration system. You know, so I think it, understanding poaching and trying to expose expose that pattern and get as many people as possible thinking in, in those terms is a very good way of arming ourselves to be able to go and talk to everybody. The way I understand this is that all of these debates, whether it's radical reformism or anything else, they, they, they are dualistic framings, left, right, etc. And it, it, to, the, the change that we need to see that I think occupies about so much in the historical moment that we need to embrace in terms of the transformation that the world requires, one of the key requirements there is getting beyond that dualistic thinking because dualistic thinking is just incredibly misleading in terms of how to engage with reality, that as soon as you get involved in, in a, a kind of binary argument, you're not engaging with how life really is, which is this very rich, complex interplay of all sorts of factors. And as soon as you, try, as soon as you play, buy into the sort of masculinist tradition of breaking things in down, to, down into sort of a narrow two-sided argument, you lose that that richness and and what that means in practice is you lose the ability skillfully as a group to negotiate those kind of problems as they come up and whenever they do I mean this is how divide and rule works like all the powerful have to do is kind of anything that causes disruption that triggers any of those those binary arguments and people tend to you know groups tend to self-destruct you know so if we can have a sense of you know, compassion being the truth, essentially, having uh, precisely because we're all so imperfect and so unloving and react in so many ways against each other, if we put love and compassion right at the front of what we do and recognise that if we can nip kind of negative cycles, whether they're internal or external, um, in the bud as, as quickly as possible and actually speak truthfully about the kind of complexity we find ourselves in then I think it's a, that's a much more useful strategy than than taking strong ideological positions because you think you, they protect you against the problems that are out there. I think generally when you take a rigid position it makes you more manipulable because lack of flexibility means that you're more predictable effectively. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's poaching and that's the compassionate revolution.